Good day, subscribers. Thank you so much for joining me today. I am Jeremy. This is the Financial Education Channel, and today we're talking about how do you invest $1 million, guys. I'm going to share with you in 10 steps, basically, how I would go about investing a $1 million. Someone told me, Jeremy, you know, um, I'm going to give you a $1 million for your photography and videography business. I would sell that thing in a hot second, <laughs> especially for a $1 million, guys. So how would I go about actually investing that, guys? I'm going to break all that down for you. It's the one time a month series I do now, which is I'm going to probably keep doing this series all the way until we get up to like $100 billion. And then after that, it's kind of like too ridiculous at that point. But you guys will get to see, because I started this at how to invest $1,000. Then I did how to invest $10,000 last month. I did how to invest $100,000. Now we're on to a million dollars. So as, as we'll go higher up in the numbers, you're going to begin to see that less and less risk is going to be taken. It's more about preserving wealth as we get higher up in these numbers. And how do I go about doing that? How do I go about preserving wealth versus uh, the lower numbers where it's more about trying to make wealth, guys? So you'll get to see some differences here. I'm really enjoying this, guys. So leave a thumbs up if you enjoy this, guys. Let's get into this. So number one thing I would do first off, once I have that million dollars, I would go and put 20% of the money, so $200,000, into my number one stock, the stock I believe in the most. So currently, the stock I believe in the most right now is GoPro. So I would put $200,000 into GoPro stock, and that would be my biggest position out of all of them, 20%. You're, the first two we're speaking about here, you really want to focus on growth, companies that are growing, companies that could really grow your money. Step number two, I would put 10% of the money, so $100,000, into my second favorite stock. So my second favorite stock right now is Win Resorts. It, you want to make sure it, you the second stock is in a different sector than the first stock. You don't want to invest in two tech companies, for instance, or two consumer discretionary companies or something like that. You want to make sure they're in two very different sectors, guys. So 10% of my money is now in my number two stock. So I have $300,000 invested in total right now at this point on two companies that are really focused around growth for the next few years and are hopefully going to grow substantially. The third step is what I would do is I would put 5% each in four blue chip stocks, guys. Blue chip stocks meaning huge companies, huge companies that they're not going away anytime soon, guys. Just monster corporations, some of the biggest of the big corporations that have huge competitive moats around them that it's unrealistic for them to go out of business anytime soon. Your money's probably just going to not grow as fast, but your money should still grow over time. You should get dividends and those kinds of things. So 5% each. So 20% of the your money, $200,000 is going to go into four different stocks, 5% a piece. So what I would probably do is I'd probably uh, invest in like something like a Coca-Cola or Pepsi. So I'm in a drink, a uh, huge drink maker, right? I would probably do something like a Procter and Gamble. A Gamble. So I'm in consumer goods. You know, they, Procter and Gamble they're one of the biggest paper towel and toilet paper companies in the world, and they got. I mean, go around any Walmart or Walgreens or whatnot and look at the back of the products. You're going to see a whole bunch of products that have Procter and Gamble on the back of it, guys. So that's two stocks so far. Probably invest in something like a Google, huge tech company, one of the biggest in the world. And last, I would probably go with something like maybe a UPS or a FedEx, a huge shipping company, guys. So four different stocks, but four blue chip companies that they're not going anywhere anytime soon. And they may not go up as much, but at the same time, the chances I lose money, very slim, especially over the long term. And I should also get dividends from most of those stocks too, guys. So the, the amount would actually go up over time. So that's step number three. So step number four, at this point, we have $400,000 invested, 40% of the portfolio, $400,000 invested into six different stocks. So now I'm going to just watch those six stocks over the next six months, guys. I'm just going to watch those. In the meantime, on to step number five, I would invest 10% of the money, so $100,000, into an S&P index fund. An index fund, so you guys know, it's basically just a fund that basically is going to track however much the, the S&P goes up. 
that's how much your, your amount's going to go up, you know, and they take out little fees here and there. But basically, however much it goes up is how much your money's going to go up. However much it goes down, if it does go down, is how much your money goes down. So I'm basically just going to be tracking the S&P 500. The step number six, I would do the same thing, another 10% of the money, another 100000 into a European fund. Maybe something that tracks the FTSE, for instance, or something like that, guys, where basically as much as the FTSE would go up in, in London is however much my money would go up or down. And then another step number six, or excuse me, step number seven, another 10% in a Chinese fund, maybe something that tracks the Shanghai exchange or something like that, guys. So I got basically $300,000 invested in three different index funds, one US-based, one European-based, another one based uh, in China, so Asian-based. So I got three index funds that are basically going to kind of go up mostly over time. They could go down in short term sometimes, but mostly over time, they'll just go up and up, guys. So that's a new way of kind of preserving wealth, and you'll see some different things we'll do even as amounts get higher. So at this point now, guys, step number eight, I have $700,000 invested. 70% of the portfolio I've invested now in the first six months. And now I make the decision if I want to sell any of those first six stocks I bought. The chances are for me personally is probably not going to happen, guys. Unless there's a new stock I have to add that I'm like, I got to invest in this stock so bad because it's such a good stock. The chances I would sell any of those, very slim to none, especially within the first six months because I'm thinking more long term. I'm thinking minimum a year when I buy a stock, usually three years out at least, guys. So I'm probably not going to sell any. But if I did, that would be the time I would do it after the six month mark. And then I'll go into step number nine. I would invest the remainder of the money throughout the year, but I would try not to ever hold more than 10 stocks, and I would try not to hold more, uh, less than six stocks, guys. So I'm going to really try to stay in that six to 10 stock range. I don't believe in being so overly diversified, especially at a million dollar mark, because, you know, if I hold 50 stocks or something, you know, what are the chances that I'm going to have... You know, if say I got 1% of my money in stock number 50, is, is that better than having that 1% of my money maybe in stock number two or stock number one? In my opinion, no. So I want to be diversified a bit, which is why I have at least six stocks. Plus, I have three index funds. So really, uh, my money's in nine different places, guys. So then we go into the last step, step number 10. So basically, all $1 million is invested within the first year. I'm going to try to invest that on in the first year. 70% of the money is in the individual stocks. 30% of the money is in index funds, guys. So that is how I'd go about investing it. We're playing it a little safer at a million dollars than the past ones, but at the same time, we're still trying to focus around some growth. We still want to grow that pie. And, and of course, it's assuming I'm the one doing it. So assuming, you know, someone with a lot of stock market knowledge and assuming that I'm the age I am. If I had, let's say, a million dollars somehow, you know, happen to get given to me or whatever, and I'm 75 years old, I probably wouldn't go about it this route. But at 27 years old, I, I'm going to do this. I'm going to go a little more aggressive. But at the same time, we got some tactics in here that are preserving wealth, like going in index funds and being in blue chip stocks, some of those things, guys. So I hope you enjoyed this today. How to invest $1 million. Uh, leave me a comment if you guys would love to see the how to invest $10 million next month. I'm going to probably do it regardless if anybody wants it, just because I'm enjoying doing these series every single month for you guys. I hope you enjoyed. If you just came across this channel, you may want to subscribe. We talk personal finance in the channel. I'm an actual business owner. I give away so many of my business tips. We talk the stock market the most of anything on this channel, including this series every single month. Thank you guys and have a great day. Day.